I spent 50 hours researching the greatest One Piece theory linked to Luffy Gear 5 and will be sharing it with you in a few minutes. The truth about Joy Boy and one more thing. Luffy is not Joy Boy, but then who is the actual Joy Boy and can anyone become Joy Boy? Even Buggy because you know this man has done too much in Impel Down Arc so let's find out. And in this video I forgot to mention something that you might want to know about Luffy Devil Fruit that no one knows except Oda and me the true meaning of his Devil Fruit power and how it is connected to One Piece you also want to know right. So let's continue. Starting from here when Luffy was at the ground after he got his ass kicked by Kaido. How do we explain what is happening to Luffy at the moment? Is this awakening? Somehow it seems different to that, because Kid and Law at same time got free. Awakening without this, we will discuss this again and answer this properly. First, let's just continue. This episode repeatedly re-emphasized the idea that Luffy actually died. Yes, you heard that right. He kicked the bucket, he became an ex-pirate. But don't worry, he's not really dead, he's pining for the fjords. He's undergoing a miraculous transformation that will change his life forever, making him the real rubber man who can do anything with his new abilities. Whatever is happening, it seems like that was the trigger. This could explain why Kaido believes that death completes a man, and why he is so desperate to die in a grand way. He is aware that death itself is the trigger for this unique form of awakening. But what is this unique form of awakening? How is it different? The fact that Luffy actually supposedly died in this moment suggests that the heartbeat, the liberation drums is not Luffy's, but a secondary ego taking over his consciousness. That brings us back to the quote from the Gorosei. I myself had said it couldn't be Luffy's fruit, but it seems that was wrong. Why would they give a specific fruit a unique name? Gomu Gomu no Mei equals Joy Boy. With this in mind, it becomes apparent that the subject that the Gorosei were discussing here with the legend of Joy Boy. One is concerned that the fruit known as Joy Boy may awaken once more, given its ties to Wano's history and the current situation. But how can the fruit be Joy Boy? That implies it has consciousness. I believe that is actually true. Devil fruits are sentient organisms, as Shanks referred to it, incarnations of the sea devil. Speaking of Shanks, it probably can't be considered as a coincidence anymore that he just so happened to slip this fruit into the possession of Luffy by accident. Or maybe he did it on purpose. Maybe he knew something we didn't. Maybe he was playing 4D chess all along. Maybe he's a mastermind who planned everything from the start. Either way, he gave Luffy one of the most important and mysterious fruits in the world. But what does it mean to be Joy Boy? Who was Joy Boy? And why is his name so weird? Well, Joy Boy was a man who lived during the Void Century, 800 years ago. He was involved in a great war against the world government and their allies, who wanted to erase history and create a new world order. Joy Boy was also a friend of Fishman Island, and made a promise to their ancient king that he would someday return and fulfill his dream of raising Noah, a gigantic ship, to the surface and unite humans and fishmen in harmony. However, Joy Boy failed to keep his promise and left behind an apology letter in a poneglyph, which was later found by Nico Robin. He also left behind his will and his legacy, which was inherited by Goldie Roger, who became known as the Pirate King and found One Piece, the greatest treasure in the world. And now it seems that Luffy is also inheriting Joy Boy's will and legacy, as he is on his way to becoming the Pirate King and finding One Piece. But what is One Piece? And why did Roger laugh when he saw it? Well, nobody knows for sure what One Piece is, except for those who have seen it with their own eyes. But there are some theories and speculations about what it could be. Some say it's a vast amount of gold and jewels. Some say it's an ancient weapon that can destroy the world. Some say it's a secret message or a truth that can change everything. But whatever it is, it must be something so amazing and hilarious that it made Roger laugh. Maybe it's a huge pile of meat which made Roger laugh because it was for Luffy. We don't know for sure, but we do know that it has something to do with Joy Boy and his dream of bringing about the dawn of the world. A dawn that will end the tyranny of the world government and their celestial dragons. A dawn that will reveal the true history and the meaning of the D. A dawn that will free the oppressed and the enslaved. A dawn that will unite all races and cultures in peace and love. A dawn that only Luffy can achieve. So if devil fruits really are sentient organisms, or incarnations of the sea devil, how would that work? Why has it never popped up before? Perhaps that can be explained through the relevance of lineage factors. We had learned quite a while ago, back in Punk Hazard, that the way Caesar's artificial devil fruits worked was through the chemical compound SAD. This chemical compound forcibly altered the subject's lineage factors, literally changing their genetic code. We know quite well by now that Caesar's versions of these fruits are massively flawed. Instead of actually becoming a chicken zone, you can end up with your head as a chicken's anus, or worse, you can end up as a giant toy soldier who can't even remember his own name and I'm kidding, that was not the work of Caesar, but work of little girls comment down the name of that girl, let's see who has strong memory. Vegapunk has created an artificial fruit that is more perfected, doing so by extracting and applying Kaido's lineage factors. This demonstrates how devil fruit bind to and alter the lineage factors. The fruit can be copied by extracting DNA. This suggests then that actual devil fruits also follow this principle. It binds to the lineage factors and forcibly alters them, resulting in the eater being granted whatever power the fruit possesses. If this is the case, then it would effectively mean that devil fruits function like 
like symbiotes, a secondary organism living in a primary organism's body. For the most well-known example in fiction, there's Venom. Venom is an alien parasite that bonds with a human host and gives them superpowers, but Venom also has its own personality and agenda, sometimes conflicting with the host. Perhaps this could be the true significance of the old mystery revolving around the symbolism of a closed left eye. It implies a secondary state of consciousness, or an alter ego, the awakening of the devil fruit symbiote. This would also still leave room for it to be possible that being Joy Boy is not limited to Luffy and his fruit, which is he one implied to be Joy Boy. It would mean that potentially anyone could achieve a state of devil fruit symbiosis and explain why Kaido still wanted to die. And one more examples from story that Odin want to open the borders of land of Wano, but his own child didn't want to open it. Is it because he ate the fruit that was extracted from DNA of Kaido? And we can see this one more time when he says he will become stronger than his father Odin. This could explain a lot about the the will of devil fruit from their past owner. Because at the same time Kaido died, Momo decided and tells Zunesha he will not open borders. Law awakened his fruit, and he is a D. I didn't see any difference and Kid also awakened his devil fruit. Well, maybe not all devil fruits have a strong personality or will like Joy Boy's fruit. Maybe some fruits are more passive or dormant than others. Maybe some fruits require more extreme conditions or stimuli to awaken their true potential. Maybe some fruits are more compatible or harmonious with their hosts than others. Maybe Law's fruit is just chill and doesn't care about anything. Maybe Kid's fruit is just angry and wants to destroy everything. There are still many mysteries and questions surrounding the nature and origin of devil fruits, but one thing is clear. They are not just simple tools or weapons. They are living beings with their own agendas and desires. And Luffy's fruit, the Gomu Gomu no Mi, seems to be the most special and important one of them all. So how is Luffy's fruit related to Joy Boy? And what does it mean for his future? Well, there are a few clues and hints that suggest that Luffy's fruit is not just any ordinary fruit, but a special one that has a connection to the ancient history and the will of D. First of all, there's the name, Gomu Gomu no Mi, rubber rubber fruit. Sounds pretty simple and straightforward, right? But what if I told you that there's more to it than meets the eye? What if I told you that the name Gomu Gomu no Mi is actually a pun or a wordplay on something else? That's right, I'm talking about the word Gomu. Gomu is the Japanese word for rubber, but it can also be read as Gomu, which means 5'6", five, 5'6". Six, five, six. Gomu. Sounds familiar? That's because it's the same as Roger's laugh. Go moo 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 moo. And we all know that Roger was the one who inherited Joy Boy's will and found One Piece, the treasure that made him laugh. Coincidence? I think not. But wait, there's more. There's also the shape and color of Luffy's fruit. It's a voilet and round fruit with swirls on it. Doesn't it look like something else? Something that has to do with Joy Boy. Something that has to do with Fishman Island. Something that has to do with Noah. That's right, I'm talking about the Tamit Box. The Tamit Box is the treasure box that contains the energy steroids that can age or de-age anyone who consumes them. It was also the key to unlocking Noah's true purpose and saving Fishman Island from destruction. And guess what? The Tamatabako also looks little round fruit with swirls on it. Coincidence? I think not. But wait, there's more. There's also the power and potential of Luffy's fruit. It may seem like a simple and weak fruit at first glance, but we have seen how Luffy has used it in creative and versatile ways throughout his journey. He has developed various techniques and gears that enhance his strength, speed, durability, and range. He has also learned how to use hockey, both armament and observation, to further improve his combat abilities. And now, he may have unlocked a new level of power that surpasses even Awakening. A power that allows him to tap into Joy Boy's will and legacy. A power that makes him invincible and unstoppable. So what do you guys think about this theory? Do you agree that Luffy is not Joy Boy or he is from start? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. This is MyPack signing off.